In this video, you'll find out if the Outremer catamaran owned by Sailing La Vagabond is the right catamaran for you. You'll also learn what are the best value and most popular catamarans on the market today. Well, an Outremer is a semi-custom boat, okay? And it's a nice, fast sailing boat. It's a really nice boat. But where it falls short is in the usable interior space department. It doesn't really do that very well. And, you know, there, there's something else that you have to be aware of. And, you know, I didn't discover this until I owned Florida's largest sailing yacht dealership in Palm Beach. It was called Eastern Yachts. And, well, of course, Hurricane Katrina took care of us. <laughs> but when I was uh, owned that dealership, we had these very wealthy people in Palm Beach who used to come to us every year or two and they would they would buy new boats like every two years and some of them came to me and said something like well you know i really like the new beneteau 50 a lot but uh i will never buy hull number one through ten and i went what why it's got a warranty and they go uh-uh i'm not buying that so i don't want to be a guinea pig and you know what they were talking about is even the big builders like Beneteau, who owns nine major brands, and when they buy resin, they buy huge amounts of fiberglass resin. When they buy engines, they buy hundreds of engines at a time. So, you know, they end, they end up actually getting all this uh, components for maybe half off when they buy them. So they can afford to actually build you a better boat and still make money and honor the warranty. Anyway, even these big builders that have hundreds and hundreds of engineers and shipwrights and naval architects and very talented people, what happens is when the naval architect designs this new boat and the shipwrights spec it out and they give it to the people in the factory, there's something lost in the translation. And there are snafus okay there's a there's a there are problems and you know one time when we bought hall number one we got a nice discount and, and wondering kind of why well we they the buyer got a surveyor on a new boat and you know how many defects they found 53 and it took my dealership four months to fix them so the, of course the buyer was mad because he couldn't use his boat while we're fixing it because it's there in the yard and so what the best way I think I can explain it is, you know, there's something lost in the translation. And when they build them, there's bugs to be worked out always, no matter who you are. Now, the big builders like Leopard, Lagoon, which is owned by Benito and so on, they have very deep pockets. They can afford to fix these problems very quickly. They know there's going to be problems. And so they have some money saved up right there to take care of them right away. But the first 10 hulls are going to be a mess. And they can afford to change the tooling to fix a lot of the problems. You know, the tooling on a 45-foot catamaran, you know, that, that costs a million dollars to build all the molds. There may be 200 molds that are used to produce that catamaran. And to change them is expensive. So... But the big builders can afford to change them right away. These little builders the, the, that are very limited in production, and, you know, Outremer really is a semi-custom builder, they cannot amortize the cost of these changes and repairs over as many hulls because they, they're only building a fraction of the number of boats. So a lot of times these problems on semi-custom boats never get fixed. When When – the buyer gets a defective boat and they go to the dealer for warranty work, they'll just cheap Charlie it. And many times the builder will not fix the problem. Like there was there was like a, a little builder in South Africa and, and they built this new model. It was a great model, looked beautiful. But like, for example, in the cockpit, the seats wouldn't drain. So whenever it rained and your cockpit cushions were out it would there would be this giant puddle under them so within three months if you had your boat in florida they would be like mildew waterlogged useless after three months because you know the, the design was faulty they didn't slant the seats to drain in the rain so do you think they could afford to fix that mold uh-uh because -uh, that's, that's a really expensive mold 
for that particular area. And so it just doesn't get fixed. They cheap Charlie. They drilled some holes in there and tried to put drain pipes and things, but it never really worked very well. So, but what I'm saying is the big builders will fix it right away. And, you know, like Leopard, for example, and Lagoon, they're in more charter fleets than, than most other brands. And when you have a charterer on the boat, like especially in the Moorings fleet and Sunsail fleet, they'll get a comment card and they'll, they'll invite the charterer to give suggestions. You know, what did you like about the boat? What did you not like? What would you redesign? And they get a lot of great ideas and they listen to the charterers. And a lot of these charterers are type A personalities who, you know, they can't relax on their vacation, they have to just do something, you know, so they're, they're writing away, you know, they, I used to see these like four and five page long, you know, suggestions about what to change. But my point is, is that the builders listen and they make changes every year when you're a big builder. Now, Utremer, they're not a big builder and you think they're going to spend a lot of money to get it perfect? Uh, I don't know. I don't think so. And these other little builders, nope. So all of the builders, I don't care who you are. They all have snafus and bugs when they first come out with a model. So don't buy those first hulls. And when you're looking, I would never buy a semi-custom boat. I mean, we used to get these semi-custom boats, you know, with limited production runs after they'd be like a year or two old. And we would we'd get them on the brokerage market. And I go, why are we getting this? This thing is like, it looks good. But what we found is that there were some really big problems that the, and the buyer would just give up and say, let's just get rid of this thing. So, you know, beware of semi custom boats. I wouldn't have one. I don't, I don't care. You know, like, yeah, the Ultramare is going to sail a couple knots faster in certain conditions, but you know what? Hey, if you're in a hurry, take a plane, you know, <laughs> uh, that's not the point losing, you know, yeah, the most popular resale model would be a leopard 39 owner version, a leopard 40 owner version, a leopard 45 owner version, a lagoon 38 owner version or 380, a lagoon 410 owner version, a lagoon 400 owner version, a lagoon 421 owner version a Lagoon 450 or 440 owner version are awesome, awesome boats because they have fly bridges, which is like the new great thing. Um, and those two production models are what is in the most demand in the market right now. One boat, there's a lot of boat for the money, are Lagoon 380s. You know, they have a lot of headroom, a lot of room for their size. They were designed in 1998, and they sold like 800 and something or more of these. And so it was a really popular model, and you can find them for 150 to 200 something like that. Um, there, There is a semi-custom boat that I do like called the Polynesia 42 that was built in the late 80s, early 90s, and they didn't use a core on it. And so they're really solid boats. They're good boats. So if you can find one of those, those are good. And they go for like 135, 150. Um, the Fountain Peugeot Mahay 36 is, is a good boat. They have some funky layouts, but like um, some of them are have only one head and three staterooms and, and but the, it's a good boat for 36 feet and you can find them with low engine hours here and there and i like those boats I, i've seen them sell for between 160 and 200 most of them go for more than that but you can find them for that if you look in the summer in the right place um leopard 38s go for under 200 i've seen a bunch of them sell for 180 185. And by the way, if you're looking for a boat, I have access to a private database that only people in the business have access to. It's called soulboats.com. And it recorded all of the selling prices for yachts since 1998. And so I can print up a list of the actual prices so you know exactly what the market is. So if you said, okay, tell me what all the boats that 
All the cats that sold for under 200000 for the last two years. And I can print up these long lists that say, you know, the make, the model, where it was, how long it took to sell, sell. We have full spec sheets and photos on each one, where it was. And it's a real valuable tool, and it's a smart way to know what the market's really doing. And I'm happy to print those up for anybody. Just send me an email and just say, hey, you know, I'd like to know what the Lagoon 400 market is doing. Tell, show me the selling prices for the last couple of years or, you know, Leopard 40, 40s, you know, or whatever. Uh, I, it's a really great tool to use. Um, other boats um, under 200 uh, would be probably, there's uh, there's some Fountain Peugeots, but you gotta, you know, make sure they have low hours and they were well cared for and you can sometimes find uh some of those but be careful you know um those are the main brands that that if i had a budget of under 200 that's that's what i would look at and you know try and find something well cared for with low engine hours if you buy a boat from through mooring sun sale which are really kind of one and the same now and it's a five-year-old boat they will give you a full refit guarantee, which means that when your surveyor writes a report and at the end you have all the defects, they'll fix them all as part of the deal. And so the great thing about that is, you know, when you sail the boat away, everything is in good working order. You know, the boat's safe, it's seaworthy, it's everything works. I mean, it's a great thing. It's still got a lot of life left before it turns into a money pit. So I highly recommend looking at their leopards and um, the 40s and 38s have all have been really good boats. I like the way they sail. They've got a lot of room and they last a long time. Um, the other boats in the other fleets, Dream Yacht Charters does a pretty good job of fixing most everything but they don't always fix everything so we just have to kind of negotiate that on each deal uh, but I know how to do that for you and can represent you uh, as your buyer's agent and make sure we get the maximum amount of free work so uh, if you have a boat in a secondary charter fleet they're not going to fix anything and then that's why you know those boats like that are six to eight years old that are coming out of another charter fleet other than those that i mentioned you better watch out because there's going to be a long list of defects and they don't get fixed so somebody's going to have to fix them especially the items that are of a safety or navigation issue because you will not be able to get insurance bound until those are fixed. And so, uh, yeah, be careful of those, those secondary charter fleet boats. Uh, they can look like good bargains, but they are not always. Subscribe to Slow Boat Sailing so you can see more of our round the world sailing trip and see more videos about buying a catamaran with Gary Fretz. This video was made possible by generous support by viewers like you, Mantis Anchors, and the Sail Timer Wind Instrument. Support Slow Boat Sailing on patreon.com slash slowboatsailing for great rewards.